you've sort of done stuff on on both sides now, Mia, because you've done mm. you know you've done stuff for Channel Four and ITV and Vice. Um, how different is it working within the TV creative structure to doing it on your own? I love working within the TV structure. I've only I've had one documentary on Channel Four last year called Meet the Markles, where I went to America to meet Meghan Markle's family and try and get an invite to the wedding. Spoiler alert, I didn't go. Mm. But um, it was still a great opportunity for me. And, um, but yeah, working with production company Monkey Kingdom, like they were brilliant. I think, you know, it was my first time doing something on television and to have the backing of like a production company that was so collaborative um, made things so much easier for me. And I had a, a brilliant time. Um, but yeah, and then, and then um, I don't know, I just feel like when you're, as a creator, when you're doing literally everything yourself, you, I produce them myself, I'm, I'm in it, um, I have to do all the marketing, as you said, like that is amazing that you have creative control, but also it's like incredibly daunting, like everything is on you to do like the jobs mm. of so many different people within a broadcast mm. structure. So for me, when I get the opportunity to work with TV, like it is amazing because you get to collaborate. And of course you can collaborate as your own creator, but like, I don't know, there's something different about it. And I think in terms of like the back to the question of like if telly is an, a turn off for new talent, I feel like it's all about collaboration yeah. because for like digital talent to, I think, succeed on TV, it has to be a collaboration between the like skill set that the broadcasters know and the what the skills that digital talent can bring to. Um, and I think once you have that communication of like what works and what not, exactly what Asim was saying about the development of people just do nothing. Like if they'd have just, if BBC Three, which they never have done, just said, Pia, do it without any sort of character development or any of those We would have been cancelled a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have worked. So I think it's the same with any with anything, with any show, whether it's scripted or whether it's fact and I think you have to have that development stage. Um, lucky for me with Meet the Markles, you know, there was already the structure of a doc we want to do a documentary and it's channel four documentary and this is how it's going to be um but yeah so it was kind of using that template that was already there but then obviously having me as the kind of the the new talent involved yeah that would be my biggest note to, to indies um is that it is absolutely about collaboration the point of the talent is that the talent have a spirit or a voice that is what you are, you know, the, what the broadcaster wants. So don't crush it and you're supposed to nurture it and, and amplify it and uh, um, appreciate the audience and the tone that they've already built because they've tested that and built that and created it and have, you know, ownership over that before this bigger thing comes along. Um, and that's where you can sort of sense that conversations could go wrong. Yeah. yeah, I just think with, with but in the, the other side of it, I guess, is like for new talent coming and working with, with broadcasters, I think the biggest thing is like managing your expectations because as like people who are in control of their their own content, I think that you can, you get very used to just, if you want to do something, you can just do it. Whereas then you get, you get the exciting email to go and like meet whatever controller and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to get my show. And then you come in and then it's just like one of millions mm. of meetings and then <laughs> and I just think like I think for me like the biggest thing I would say to new talent is just like yeah manage your expectations <laughs> because it's not yeah. gonna happen <laughs> for a while but that's just because the in the like the industry is mm. so different than than YouTube and it's just there's so many different people that have to sign something off and I think that you can actually get quite you know, not frustrated, but you you can just feel a bit down, I guess, sometimes when you don't think things aren't happening like that because you're so used to as a YouTuber just being like, it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> I guess um, TV likes to almost categorise itself. So we have like genre teams. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're a YouTube creator, you see yourself as a creator. So, you know, some of the stuff that you do is very comedic. Some of it is you describe yourself what, as an entertainment talent or would you say it's fact and where it, exactly, you, you sort of don't know or don't really care because you're creating great content that's connecting with an audience. So I think sometimes we have to look at ourselves in terms of we create these genre boxes, which isn't conforming mm. to the other way around. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, there's a kind of, there's a bit of uh, a gap bridging to be mm -hmm. done, which is effectively what you're doing over at TalentWorks. And we'll talk about it uh, in a sec. But let's have a quick look at a reel that you've had. Uh, so, so what are you doing over at TalentWorks? How long have you been up and running for? So we launched in October last year, so yeah. fairly new. We're, it's, we're a label within BBC Studios. So our total focus is on, as Adrian said there, 
building bridges between BBC Studios, which houses some of the best production facilities in, in the UK, and new emerging green talent. So an example of something we did was we ran a comedy retreat earlier in this year where we partnered with the BBC Writers' Room and we took eight digital creators away for four days and Amelia was one of them. And it was basically two objectives. One, build a relationship with BBC Studios. And secondly, sort of upskill, but not in a patronising way. It was sort of like breaking down the jargon that the TV industry imposes. So if they, Amelia was going to come in and then someone was saying, oh great, have you got a treatment for that? Have you got a character arc for that? What's the, what's the story of this? She, she doesn't have to write a treatment for what she's created. What she has got is an incredible voice. And it's sort of what you were saying, you know, you'd already cracked the, the characters in the world. You might have not cracked writing a great treatment or uh, your great pitch, but you've sort of got the bare bones. So that's what TalentWorks does. It works to upskill and, but again, not in a patronizing way, to bring together and bridge gaps between new talent that are online. So we sort of like to call it digital talent, but you can sort of scrap the word digital. It's just talent that is on a different platform. We look for storytellers. So people that have great voices, whether that's comedy, factual, you name it, it's cross genre and cross platform. I mean, th these uh, retreats sort of away days, they sound like a fucking nightmare. Do they, <laughs> uh, do they work? Are they good? Oh, I don't know. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're not a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> no, I loved it. It was amazing. Like just as you said, like because I'm someone who would I like writing scripts at the moment, but I had no idea how to do that. And something as simple as like yeah, exactly like story arcs or how to like introduce a character into the first episode of, of a sitcom. Like they're all kind of things that we were learning there. Um, but yeah, it, it was amazing. Even just to meet other writers, it was great because I never like get to interact with that many other people that are like on screen talent or or like other writers. So even just to meet those people is great. I think there's like, um, in this country we have like, you know, like I've pitched a few things, but it's always, I always pitch to the producer from the production company. In America, like we went out there a couple of years ago, we were pitching a few things. You kind of pitch directly to the networks. And you know, it's, a lot of it is about you being in the room and selling them that idea, selling them that dream. I think it would be nice to see that come over here because here there's always that middleman, you know, with the producer and the production company. It would be nice to go into a room with a commissioner and sell them, you know, kind of a bit like that partridge scene, mm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> smell my, you know, that, not that, but you know what I mean? It, it, I think, I think there's like, there is, there would be, there is some benefit in having that direct, for, for someone who can't, I'm not great at treatments, you know, I can write, but you know, I can write a script, but in terms of selling it and make it look all flashy and all that, I'm rubbish at that. I'll do something shit on Microsoft Paint, like it'll look shit. <laughs> but like, if I'm in a room, I could sell anything to anyone. <laughs> You know what I mean? But I think that's what it is. Like you have to have, they have to see that kind of energy, that charisma, you know, that passion. And I, I think that it would be nice to see more of that happening in, in our industry where people who, are, who might not be the most academic or articulate and can do this, can do that, but can go in a room and tell them that your passion and your dream. And then on the basis of that, you can start working, you know? I think that would be nice to see. Yeah, here, bring but. people in. And we, a lot of people come in to see us and meeting them directly is definitely more exciting. Yeah. And more infectious and sticks in the memory more whenever you've met the... Yeah, because you know what it's like, you get treatments and yeah. scripts and they just sit on your table and it's like, you know, where's yeah. that passion? You want to bust in the door and yeah. go, listen, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my dream, motherfucker. You, know? <laughs> you want that energy, you know what I mean? And people like that. In America, it's like yeah, that. I mean, it's yeah. threatening. In America, it's like that. It's like, okay, what you got? You know, yeah. and you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> right, so. Uh. <laughs> the first time I did meetings in America, I genuinely, because they're so full on yeah. uh, and so into you, I came out and thought, I think I've got my own sitcom. Yeah. I didn't have my own sitcom, but you're genuinely just like, well, they, they loved me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think there's a bit of work as well, Helen, to do with sort of because it's about bringing digital creatives and TV people close together and TV people need to sort of shift a bit as well. Do you talk to them about how they can more effectively work yeah, with new talent? Absolutely. It's sort of meeting people halfway yeah. with mutual respect and coming coming at it feeling like absolutely telly has got a lot to give but also the other party coming to you has got a lot to give so the projects that you saw there a lot of the time we've had um talent in the edit suite with us in the cutting room mm. sort of being involved at every step of the way if you say you want to be involved with a creator they've got the authentic voice 
So sort of you have to bring them in every step of the way and build a team that want to respect that and want to have the creator's voice involved every step of the way. I was going to say, because I guess that the real, um, the, the challenge is maintaining the sort of authenticity and not in some way kind of diluting or bastardising what was good about the thing originally. Yeah. Um, and that's what we've got to get better at, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, what, what we want to work with is, is talent who want to do something broader than their platform. So they can create content on YouTube. F brilliant. Ca carry on doing that. Come to TalentWorks or BBC Studios or, or a commissioner when you want to do something different or broader or slightly separated. Like you, like you said at the beginning, you know, people do, just do nothing. The TV show ended up being something sort of, it had that essence, but it, it was a bigger scale of production. That's sort of when you want to talk to talent.